Welcome to our introductory tutorial to Chorus, a social media data collection and visual analytics suite for social science. Chorus is currently an experimental prototype and it's free to use on request. This video is designed to introduce you to the Chorus package and run through a selection of the features and functions it can provide for social research. As an overview, this video aims to demonstrate the various software components that make up the Chorus package. First I'll talk about how you can collect data from Twitter using our Tweet Catcher program, also known as Chorus TC. Then I'll move on to how you can analyse that data in our visual analytic program TweetViz, or Chorus TV, which features two different ways to view your data, the Timeline Explorer and the Cluster Explorer. I'll be demonstrating some of the key functions of these programs as I go along, so hopefully this should give you a good insight into what Chorus is and how you can use it yourself in your own research work. Chorus is composed of two main parts, TweetCatcher, which handles data collection, and TweetViz, which facilitates the analysis of that data with interactive and insightful visualizations. So first of all, let's look at TweetCatcher, a data collection program which allows users to build complex queries for harvesting data via the Twitter API. There are two versions of TweetCatcher, a web-based server, Chorus TCW, and a desktop edition, Chorus TCD. I'll focus here on Chorus TCD specifically. The desktop version of TweetCatcher is available to interested users and it allows users to collect data themselves. Chorus TCD requires users to set up a Twitter account and register as developers themselves and this is very easily done via the Twitter development website which can be found at dev.twitter.com and also by following the instructions on creating an application which is supplied with the Chorus desktop manual. Please note that by using your own application credentials users are responsible for following the Twitter rules of the road regarding data collection and use. These can be found on the Twitter development website at the address on screen. Once users have created their application and used the credentials to sign into Chorus TCD, they're able to collect data according to two data collection strategies. So firstly, there's the familiar query keyword search that's available in the search panel, where users can type in key terms and logical operators to build up a search query to address their questions. Users can then start the query running to retrieve all mentions of terms that satisfy the query and you'll see that if I type in the words Mars and Rover and start this off, some recent tweet mentions of the Mars Rover start to populate the data field below. Note also that Twitter's API only allows you to search for statuses that are posted within the last seven days. However, by loading a previously saved dataset into TCD, it's possible to update the data file with the latest statuses. So providing updates are performed at least once a week, it's possible to gradually accumulate data over an extended period of time. Also available is our user following data collection function, which allows you to construct datasets by following the timelines of specified Twitter users. We find that this is useful for projects where query keywords aren't necessarily so obvious, or where there are many terms with which Twitter users tweet about a single topic. In the user timelines panel, I can copy in a list of multiple Twitter users, and to demonstrate this, I'll choose the official Chorus account and my own personal Twitter feed, and we can start retrieving timeline data for these two feeds. Unlike the search function, it's possible to travel farther back along a user's timeline than just a single week. In fact, it's possible to retrieve up to 3,200 of each user's most recent statuses. The two different types of datasets, query keyword and user following, are exportable as text files such that you can keep saved copies of your datasets on your computer. We've also developed Chorus TCW, a server-based data collection service which automates the process of collecting Twitter data over extended periods of time. This is particularly useful for following the progress of events that unfold gradually or for slow-burning topics that have a limited population of interest. Currently, we are unable to offer this service to external users, although bear in mind that its topic tracking functionality can be achieved for many purposes by periodically running an update task on Chorus TCD. Chorus, specifically the visual analytic component, which we call TweetViz, can then process this raw data into functional visualizations, which can be used as the first step towards analyzing that data. TweetViz has got two different ways of breaking down this data. Firstly, this Timeline Explorer, which you can currently see on screen, and this view allows for an analysis reliant on the chronological ordering of tweet information. Secondly, you can view your data in Cluster Explorer, which takes the entire dataset as a whole and visualizes Twitter topics instead. We'll demonstrate a few of TweetViz's functions with a dataset collected of all uses of the term hashtag BBCQT, 
which is the official hashtag of Question Time, a weekly BBC television programme featuring topical debates between a panel of politicians and other public figures and there's members of public in the audience. This dataset is taken over a two-hour period from 10.30pm to 12.30am to over the 31st January and 1st February. This dataset captures Twitter conversation using the official BBC QT hashtag for a period of time just before the programme, during the programme itself, and any discussions that linger around after the programme's finished. In Timeline Explorer, tweet data is plotted across time such that you can see the ebbs and flows of Twitter conversation, and you can pinpoint areas of particular interest. TweetViz lets users define a unit of intervals. In the case of our BBC QT dataset, we want it so that intervals are minute long periods, so the value in interval length is 1. Various analytic metrics are available, including all overall tweet volume and a tweet to link ratio. These are both shown in the grey bar chart, with the light grey being tweet volume and the dark grey being the proportion of the tweets containing the URL. So you can see here that most of the conversation is centered around the period where the program is actually being broadcast, and there's very few URL links being propagated. And this is confirmed if we look at the link ratio value here, the LR number, which is typically low throughout. Chorus also uses sentiment analytics, and these are shown in the blue and green lines, which represent negative and positive sentiment of tweets respectively. And we can see in the data that during the program there seems to be a lot of agreement on sentiment, with neither metric fluctuating much, but with negative sentiment dominating throughout. The yellow and red lines show measures of semantic homogeneity and novelty, which relates to the overall topical similarities across and between intervals. The yellow homogeneity line refers to how frequently tweeters are using the same words within an interval, with a higher homogeneity score indicating a strong agreement in the vocabularies people are drawing on to talk about the issue at hand, and a low score indicating the opposite. For our dataset, homogeneity seems to be fairly low throughout, presumably because there's not much time for Twitter users to develop topics and opinions to a level of consensus that they're using the same vocabulary to discuss them. The red novelty line refers to tweeters' usage of new terms across intervals, with a low novelty score indicating that people are discussing a similar set of topics to the previous few intervals, and a high score indicating a departure to a new set of topics. You can see that novelty dips significantly during the programme, demonstrating that at the time of broadcast people are tending towards discussing the same issues. Novelty also increases almost as soon as the programme ends, indicating that after it's finished, people on the whole start talking about different topics, perhaps they're reviewing previous bits of the programme they thought particularly interesting. Also available are a number of sortable statistics relating to various data types on both the data set level and interval levels. You can see the data set level here and terms within the interval selected here. So you can sort and subsort your information by most frequently occurring terms, usernames, mentions, hashtags and links such that you can get an insight into the most significant topics in your data set and within each interval as well. So we can see the most common terms used in, the, in this data set are Dellingpole and Varsi, which are the names of two of the panel members on this particular episode that seem to have inspired a lot of conversation. Clicking on terms also shows you a bar graph relating to where in your dataset that term appears. If I click on the term private, you can see that it gets mentioned most frequently across a 20 minute period towards the end of the program, so just there. Um, and additionally, double clicking the term brings up a list of co located words. And this can be considered a kind of probability that another word will occur with your chosen term. And it can be computed either for terms occurring together in an interval or together in the same tweet. Now if we see terms co-located with the word private, you get a sense of how it's used in the conversation most frequently. In this case relating to private schools and the issue of state fees. All of this information is related back to original tweet content in the panel at the bottom of the screen, which displays various data fields contained within a tweet and can be filtered by users in various ways, such as by mentions of a particular term and so on. So when we clicked on the term private, this brought up a list of all the tweets mentioned in that term, which you can read and sort in a number of ways, so by user, by sentiment, by hashtags used and so on. Moving to Cluster Explorer, this way of breaking down data removes the chronological ordering of tweets and instead provides visualizations around the overall topical makeup of your dataset. Cluster Explorer carries over the same sortable statistical measures you saw in Timeline Explorer, and you can see interval and term statistic boxes as well as the original tweet data fields, and these are the same functionalities as in Timeline Explorer. 
However, what you can also see is uh, three panels, which are the 2D cluster maps that plot the topical similarity of intervals, tweets, and terms in such a way that topically similar nodes cluster together. So the relationship of these nodes to each other are traceable via the lines drawn between them. So it's very clear to see how topics originate with hub nodes, how they branch off into new topics, and so on. The first of these cluster maps is on the interval level. Each circle or node represents one interval of time, and nodes are organised according to how topically similar the discourse was during each corresponding interval. You can see that each node's numbered. This is the position it occurs within the timeline explorer view you saw previously. These nodes are also different sizes. The size relates to how populated each interval is, with busier intervals being larger. The topics discussed within each interval are now clustered together in different ways, and you can see there's quite a linear flow to the BBC QT conversation with topics starting at one end of a thread and gradually leading through to another with a few diverging subtopic branches. Again, clicking on an interval node produces a list of tweets which are contained within that interval and you can see that popping up in the data field below here. You'll notice that shortly after clicking on an interval node, a new map appears in the tweet view below. In this view, nodes represent the subset of tweets that were created during the time interval. And again, this view reveals various clusters of topically related tweets. The third term level cluster map is particularly interesting, and this plots every significant term in the dataset on a cluster map such that you can see how individual words are most commonly used together and get a sense of what topics people found it particularly important to tweet about, as well as things like how central topics branch off into various subtopics and so on. So if I knock a few terms out, we can see how the key terms Dellingpole and Varsi appear quite far apart from each other and on different topical strands, indicating that tweeters mention these two people with very dissimilar vocabularies. You can add in or remove labels to make these relations more visually clear, so if I just add in a few more labels now, we we'll begin to see what topics our dataset consists of a bit more in a bit more depth. You can also zoom in on specific sections of the dataset to increase the clarity. So if I click on the term private, it jumps me to that in the term level view. And we can again see that this topic is stronger related to schools and education. And you can map out exactly what the topic consists of. Zooming in on the term level map also makes changes to the interval level map. So you can see that certain intervals have changed colour from black to bright green. And this relates to how the terms visible in the term level map are present throughout different intervals in the data set. With brighter green being more present and a darker shade meaning less present. So if we zoom in a bit further on the branch, we can see where in the topical thread these specific terms are and the colour change is there to represent that. To summarise, Chorus is a social research software tool for facilitating research work involving social media data, specifically that drawn from Twitter. Chorus allows you to collect data using our data collection tool, TweetCatcher. Having collected data via TweetCatcher, you can then go on to explore that data using our analytics tool, Chorus TV or TweetViz. Within TweetViz, there are two views which provide different ways of breaking your data down, the Timeline Explorer and the Cluster Explorer. Each view has a number of different features and functions which work in conjunction with each other, such that the various algorithms and metrics are always relatable back to the original tweet content at the heart of your datasets. Overall, these features of Chorus are designed to facilitate social science analysis work rather than automate it and remove it from the researcher's control. The visualisations and statistics on offer here are intended to provide an exploratory insight into your data and allow you to get more out of working with social media data. Whilst compliance with Twitter's terms and conditions restricts our free distribution of data via the web platform of TweetCatcher, so that's Chorus TCW, we are able to provide interested viewers with fully functional copies of our desktop versions of TweetCatcher, Chorus TCD and of our analytic element of Chorus, TweetViz. This package will allow you to collect and explore data sets yourselves in, a, in very simple and intuitive ways and to that end we encourage viewers to get in touch with us on our email address chorusteamatlive.com where we'll be able to provide you with copies of our software and supporting using it as part of your own research projects.